Hi everyone. If you had a look over the uh, the first video about how we actually write our analysis paragraphs, then what you're seeing in front of you uh, shouldn't seem too, uh, too foreign or bizarre. Um, in our previous video, we talked about using our data from our surveys to create the body of our report. And that is these three analysis paragraphs based on the three categories that you had the most information for. And what we try to do in the very first mini paragraph is just simply list the similarities between you and your subject. And as you can see here in the bolded text, use data from your actual survey to support your findings. Now the next paragraph was kind of an explanation paragraph. You were going to explain why you see these similarities existing. And for that, you need to go back and think about our previous lessons on things like access and exposure, the uses in gratification theory and social generations. As you can see here, I've kind of bolded where we've talked about some of those in the past. And then you repeated the process for the following two. It listed the differences between your use of, say, media and duration, using the bolded text here to show that you've used survey data to support your findings. And then in the blue, the last paragraph is kind of an explanation as to why you believe this exists. And again, you've referenced back to things that we've looked at prior to starting the assessment. So things like the uses and gratification theory. Now, that's where we're starting. And if you've accomplished that for your analysis paragraph, you're well on the way to achieving the standard. But because we want to aim a little higher than simply the achieved, and we want to challenge ourselves to the best that, that we know we can do, um, we want to go ahead and try to lift it to a merit level. And lifting it to a merit level at this stage means incorporating the research so that we have a clear and reasoned in-depth argument. Okay, so this is what I have right now. Today we're going to be adding to it using the research that we can find. So in regards to where we want to start, we want to make sure that we add the research to the second and to the fourth paragraph. So I'm going to unhighlight these ones that listed the differences and the similarities, and focus on finding research that will support both the explanations. So starting with the second one here, I've talked about how we use digital media a lot in our workplace. And as a result, you know, for instance, both me and my subject are issued laptops by our employers. It has to do with our access and exposure to that media. Now you might be asking yourself, where do I even begin to find the research? And that's hopefully where you remember that in our booklet, starting on page 11, are a couple of articles to start you off that include statistics and explanations that might support some of your findings. So I might simply start looking through all the highlighted areas that I created when I started doing my research. As I skim through, the information and, and go back through it, I may find that there isn't anything applicable, that maybe there's something missing that, that doesn't fully support my explanation. So what I might do then is I might kind of just resort to an internet search. I might go online and type into Google digital media in the workplace, because that's what I'm looking for statistics for. Now, obviously, you know, not to click on the very, very first kind of return. Have a quick scroll through some of those. And take a look at whether any of the titles kind of stand out for you. <clears throat> now, this one here, the increasing impact of the digital workplace, sounds like it, it has some information that might be relevant for me there. So again, I click on it and just do a quick little skim. Remember, when you're skimming things, you're looking for kind of keywords, sometimes things that are bolded or things that have hyperlinks. So here it talks about the fact that we spend basically a third of our lives, either at work or at school. It talks about how people's work is important and affects their happiness. It also says that the way people work is also changing and the technology is the driving force. So it sounds like an article that I might be able to find something in. And as I scroll down further, and 
click off the annoying kind of pop-ups that show up. I look at the subheading. So the way people work, this looks like, again, a good starting point for me. Now immediately, because it's hyperlinked, my eyes go to this. An increase in smartphone usage and capability have meant that employees now have access to emails and important documents virtually on the move. Aha! Better solutions have also been snapped up in the virtual workplace and the use of smartphone apps for business has doubled over the last five years. I'm going to copy this bit of text here. I may not use all of it, but I'm certainly going to copy it. I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to now have a quick little look. What I've written, I've said, as a result, we are issued laptops by our employers, and therefore our working media. We both use digital media to gather information. Okay. So now, I think this is a great place to add what I've just found. Now, don't worry, we're not simply going to copy and paste without citing it. But I'm just changing the formatting so that matches the rest of the text. <clears throat> so I want to reference it. I'm going to do that in two ways. The first thing I'm going to do is go back to the actual name of the article. So you know the author is Nick Ismail and the increasing impact of the digital workplace. So between those paragraphs, I might say, in Nick Ismail's online article, and I'll go back and obviously check the increasing impact of the digital workplace. Uh, he notes. that employees now have greater access to work-related items because of the way the information is presented. In the article, he states, and remember now, I'm going to quote this, so I've obviously got to have my quotation marks. And all of a sudden now, just like that, I have added to that paragraph. I have supported it with research. to make my report much more in-depth and a lot more reasoned. Now, when we actually cite a source, so when we take something off online or something from the booklet, we have to state who it belongs to. So in this case, we've actually stated his name in the beginning of our sentence, so in Nick Ishmael's online article. But we also want to, at the end of a quotation or an end of the text that we've taken offline, we want to basically do what they call an embedded citation. So at the very end, I use a bracket. I put the author's surname. And if it's an online article, I might put the, the year or the URL address. In this case, I'll use the year because I'm going to be creating a reference list at the end where all that information is. Now, it's significantly increased my explanation, but it also shows that this isn't something I've just kind of made up. There's actually been a lot of research that goes into this to explain it. And I'm going to do the exact same thing in my next explanation paragraph. 